How to ask out your crush without feeling like a creep. Hi guys, my name is Christine. I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about how to ask out your crush without feeling like a creep. So the first thing I want to talk about is, you know, it's really difficult to control other people's perceptions of you and how they perceive you. So no matter what, whatever you do, sometimes you're going to be perceived as a creep. It's just how people are. You know, you can't control those things. You can't control how they think about you and how they look at you. Even if you have the best intentions, even if you're really polite when you're asking someone out, that might not necessarily mean that they're not going to think of you as a creep. Um, But basically this method that I'm going to go into is going to basically um, allow you to put your best foot forward Um, and basically minimize that chance of that person thinking that you're a creep. So one thing that I wanna talk about is, and this is all about perception and how people perceive you. And this was a time when I wasn't even hitting on someone. This wasn't even a time when I felt attracted to someone and yet they still thought I was a creep. And I think it may have been to do with the fact that this girl actually kind of knew or was kind of suspicious about the fact that I was gay or could be gay, could be bisexual or something like that. And basically I was at a party and there was a water fight going on because it was in the middle of summer. I was 18 years old. You know, it's kind of like what people, (laughs) what teenagers do when they're still kind of half kids. You know, we have like these like weird water fights and things like that. Um, So basically what happened was there was this water fight going on. And at some point I started having a water fight with this girl that kind of already had a suspicion that I was gay or I was uh, bisexual. And at some point, during this water fight, I don't know what it is that I did. I personally felt like I didn't do anything, but she just ran over to her boyfriend and then gave me like a really dirty look as if I'd like just touched her in an inappropriate way when we was just having a water fight. And that's when I kind of started, it started kind of dawn on me that no matter what, some people are gonna think you're creepy even if you are just being yourself, even if you're just being normal, even if you're not even trying to hit on someone. So obviously when you are hitting on someone, you're gonna sometimes be perceived as a creep, especially if this is someone who doesn't know you all that well, like that girl, she didn't really know me all that well, all she knew was a little bit about me and the fact that I might be gay. And obviously she probably had a bit of a narcissistic view of herself thinking that everybody loved her because I can tell you for a fact that I certainly wasn't interested in her in that way. But she thought I was for some reason, probably because she just assumed because I was gay that I would be interested in her or something like that. But anyway, the point is, is that you can't really control other people's perceptions of you. So no matter what, some girls or some guys who you ask out are going to think you're being a little bit creepy. So... You, it, so allow yourself basically um, that possibility to happen because it might very well happen, especially if you are single and you are approaching a lot of people um, who are asking out. So if you have a crush and you want to be, you know, come across as less the less creepy you possibly can, basically, let's go through that method. So the first thing, so the first thing to do is to just go for it. Um, don't, you know, hang about in the background, don't try to become their friend first or anything like that. You know, when you start getting that attraction for someone, when you see someone who you think is really cute and you'd love to ask out, then just go for it. So with your crush, when, when you approach them, or it could be a fact that they already do know you quite well, perhaps it's a friend, you might have to like say to them something like, you know what, this is uh, a little bit random, um, but I actually think that you're really cute. And the reason why you wanna say at the beginning, Um, oh, I'm sorry, this might seem a bit random, is because if they've known you for a long time and they see you as just a friend, then it will seem a little bit out of the blue. So, and this is a good thing you can kind of say to people anyway, if let's say you see someone who you really like and it's a stranger, you can go up to them and be like, hey, this is really random, you know, and it just basically gives you that little bit of social proof. Um, uh, And it makes you seem a little bit more down to earth because if you go up to someone and you just simply ask them out on a date, Um, it can come across a bit, maybe a bit egotistical, but if you go up to them and you kind of like a little bit, have a little bit of nervous energy about you and be like, you know, sorry, this is a little bit random, you know, you're gonna come across more down to earth. So basically you wanna have that um, essence about you. So you go up to them and you say, hey, this is a bit random, but I actually think you're really cute. 
um, when are you available to have a drink? And the reason why you want to ask when they're available is because you don't want to just be like, oh, I was wondering if maybe you'd like to go out with me sometime. It leaves it too much up in the air. So basically you go up to them and you ask them when they are available to go out for a drink with you. And it's also a good point to put in things like, uh, I actually think you're really cute. So you go up to them and say, hi, sorry, I know this is really random, but I actually think you're really cute. The reason why you say, want to say, I think you're really cute is because um, obviously you want them to know that you're interested in them in that way romantically and you know, and you think that they're really pretty or really handsome or something. So that's what you kind of need to put across as well. Um, so saying, I, I think you're really cute is a good way to do that. And the reason why you want to ask them to meet you out for a drink is because if you commit to like a sit down dinner or something that could go on for much longer, if you decide that you're actually not really into this person, it's gonna be really difficult to leave. It's so much easier to leave if you just meet up for a drink. And a drink, if you are enjoying your time together, can lead to something else as well. Like you could then go out for a walk together after the drink, or you could go and have a sit down meal then. But it's always best for your first kind of date with someone to be a drink. And when you've said to them, hey, I know this is a bit random, but I actually think you're really cute. When are you available to meet up for a drink? You have to then wait for them to respond. You know, say that to them, obviously say it loud and clear as well. Not so, you know, you don't want to whisper it basically because they might not hear you. Um, so make sure that you say it and then you just give them time to respond. Don't just, you know, start talking again immediately after you've asked. Just give them time to, you know, respond to you. So what they'll either say is they'll give you the times when they're available or they, may, they might say that they're already in a relationship and they're sorry that they can't do that with you um, or something like that. Or they will say yes, they will say yes to it. And basically if they say yes to it, you can be like, great, um, well I know this really great place, how about we meet at this time at this place? Because um, obviously if you ask them, when they're available, they're gonna to say to you if they like you, and they like you and would like to go, on, go out with a drink with you as well, they're gonna say, oh yeah, I'm free on this day, that day, this evening, you know, that evening, you know, they're gonna give you options. And basically when they give you the options, you pick which day is best for you out of those when you're free as well. And then you make and arrange a time and a place to actually meet up at. And you can be like, great, I know this great, like uh, I've a cocktail bar, how about I meet you here? Um, at uh, seven o'clock on Saturday, you know, depending obviously on the times that they gave you when they were available. And then you just wait and go out on that date with them. But if they say no and they, uh, any kind of no, so it could be no, sorry, I've got a boyfriend or no, I've got a girlfriend or no, I'm married or it could be um, no, sorry, I'm just not, I just don't see you in that way or I'm not really looking to date anyone right now or anything like that. If they basically say you anything but yes, all you need to say to not come across as creepy is, okay, that's that's fine, just take it as a compliment, and then, you know, you leave. Don't hang about, don't try to continue to make the conversation go, don't force things, don't stick around in the background. Um, just tell them to take it as a compliment, um, and that it's fine, and obviously no worries, and then just, just leave. You don't need to, just don't hang around. If you hang around, you're gonna seem like a creep. But if you just say, take, a, take it as a compliment, then just, you know, walk away. Um, and then don't hang about, please don't hang about. And don't try to be their friend either. You know, if you're interested in them romantically and you would like to date them, then you kind of always need to be putting across that vibe. Um, if you want as well, you could even say, if this is someone that you see a lot and it's someone you know quite well, you can be, you can say something like, oh, no worries, take it as a compliment, but hey, you know what, if you ever change your mind about it and you would like to go out for a drink with me, then please let me know about it. And then, you know, again, you walk away and you move on with your life. And that's the other thing, just to not be creepy, um, you really need to, you know, move on when someone rejects you. You really need to not hang about in the background and hope that when they become single or when they, or, you know, basically hoping that one day they will fall in love with you and things like that. So essentially, you need to basically move on if they do reject you and they don't say yes to going out with you and they don't give you times when they're available. Because the more you hang about in the background, the more that you kind of stalk their social media pages, the more you you know try to worm your way into their life because you just want to be a part of their life no matter what. You know, you need to not do that kind of stuff. You need to move on and go and ask someone else out, you know, join a few dating uh, apps, find uh, go on a few dating websites and stuff. 
and you know start dating other people because you know these kinds of things won't matter as much if you have a more of an abundance mindset so if you've got like let's say like three dates lined up and you've got you know loads of dates coming up basically it won't matter so much if you ask someone out and they're not interested because you're like well actually you know I've got these other dates obviously you don't say this to them but you know in your own mind oh well I've got a few other dates coming up so it doesn't matter if this person rejects me however if your sole focus is on this one person this one crush and they're basically everything to you then of course you're going to feel really bummed out you're going to feel really anxious about it you might try and cling on to them but if you've got other people in your life and you've got other dates lined up that you're going to go on then it's not going to matter as much because you've got other options and you know we always feel more confident and relaxed about certain areas of our life when we have a lot of options it's like when you've got a lot of options for jobs and careers you know you have more of an abundance mindset and you're not going to just go for that first job that you know um, offers you the job you're going to look at your options you're going to weigh them up you're going to be like mm, well this job here's the pros and cons of that job and here's the pros and cons of this job and you know you're going to have more of an abundance mindset and you're basically not going to be as desperate. And being creepy is kind of... Uh, uh, and being desperate is one of those things that makes people look creepy. And if you're not desperate because you've got other people in your life that you're dating, you're going to feel much more relaxed and less nervous about it. You're going to not cling so much to those people that reject you and things like that. So that's really important, having other options. So make sure you get yourself, you know, at least free kind of dating apps or websites to use so you can meet people in your area that you can go on dates with. Um, the reason why I say free is because um, if it gets any more than that, then if it gets to like four or five or more, then you're not gonna be able to maintain them all. You're not gonna be able to check them that regularly. Um, but if you have below that, if you have like two or one, you're not going, you're gonna be missing out on a lot of people because most people only have one dating app. They only use one dating app. And if they're only using one dating app, um, and most people are, are only using one dating app, then you're missing out on potentially a lot of other people that are in your area. And also, if you're like, well, there's no one in my area, I've been, date I've been on dating apps for ages and there's no one in my area and things like that. Well, sometimes you have to be patient because if you live in a busy place, then more than likely there are new people moving into that area every month. And that's how I met my wife. My wife moved into the area and three weeks later, we went on a date because we had the same dating app. So, you know, you need to have, you know, m multiple dating apps and you need to be patient with the process because there might be new people moving in. And just because, you know, you've been on a so you've been on a dating app for like a week or a month or something. And that's that's simply just not enough time. You need to give yourself time and you need to be patient um, and, you know, just keep on dating until you find that right person. But being desperate is the thing that's going to make you look more cre the most creepy. Um, and you, you're going to help not but look a bit creepy because you're going to have that nervous energy. You're going to really, really, really to be desperate for them to like you back. And if you're not desperate because you've got other people lined up that you're going to go on dates with, you're not going to come across that way. And it's not going to hurt as much if someone does reject you, if your crush does say that they're not interested in you in that way. But luckily, um, if you ask them out in that way and you ask them when they're available, they will say yes about going out with you and then you can go on that date with them. So it's all about basically how you kind of carry yourself. It's all about how desperate you are coming across and things like that. But as long as you don't hang about if they do reject you and you just tell them to take it as a compliment, you shouldn't come across as creepy. But sometimes, like the story I told you about me with that girl who I was having a water fight with, sometimes, you know, no matter what you do, you're going to come across as creepy to some people. And, you know, you can't really change that. Um, it's just a numbers game. You know, let's say you ask 10 people out and at least one of them may find you creepy, something like that. So, you know, no matter what you do, you can do everything right and still look creepy. So just keep that in mind and don't worry about it. Basically, the most important thing is that you're going for it and you're trying. If you would like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com. Thank you so much for watching and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye, guys.